Yo, Dom, over here. Hey, hey Dom, uh, hey. Yo, Dom. Mike, uh, Very nice to meet you. Hey, there you are. How you doing, buddy? Good, buddy. Good. Nice to meet you, man. Well, nice to meet you, too. I mean, uh, do you want me to go some of my credits in front of you, though? Over here at Disney World? I don't, I don't get it either. Hey Mike, nice to meet you, man. Sorry, sorry about that mix-up on the uh, time frame. No I've been all fucked up with the uh, East Coast, West Coast. The shit always screws me up every time I travel. No problem. Yeah, I, got, I got an applause break. Yeah. Carried me off stage right to the car. Yeah, where are you, where are you going? I'm in uh, off the hook in uh, Naples, Florida. Oh, I like that place. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna call the guy Captain though. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm not calling him Captain. Is it, is it captain, my ass. What's it? Is, 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 is Captain? Right? Is it, Captain, what's that? What's that? Like an ins what, what did it the guy who owns the club is named Captain Brian. Uh, okay. what does he have? Does he have like a fishing boat like charter hustle? Is like a like I don't a side even think that. I just, he likes the title. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like the maestro in uh in Seinfeld. They had they had that, they made him call him the, the maestro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's this? How's the scene down there? Uh, Naples. I, right? I, I actually like Naples very much. It's a lot of retired people who have a little bit of money, and they're like, "I'm here Monday through Thursday," and uh, I think eventually I'll work my way up to a weekend. But right now, Monday through Thursday, they got me nice. here. Oh, nice. That's it. I'm just kidding about the weekend. If I can't do a weekend by this point, I don't know. <laughs> How long have you been doing stand up? 24 years. Wow. You, you started in Philly, didn't you, Mike? I started in Philly at the Laugh House. Dom, I, I saw you when you were coming through the early 2000s. I bought a ticket. I came and watched you live. It was uh, it was really something, man. I, I've really been a big fan for a long time. Um, growing up, uh, I'm Italian on both sides, and uh, we loved you. All right, now, first of all, thank you, but how can I give you, like, bust, bust your chops or when you're that nice to me? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but thanks. <laughs> Did you bro so you broke in at the laugh who was in your yeah, class? Was at the laugh house. Who, who, who was the class of comedians that you came up with in Philly? Uh the class of comedians I came up with was DeRosa. Joe DeRosa was like around the time. Big J, Kurt, and Kevin Hart all mm -hmm. had just left. So it was me Kevin and Hart, DeRosa Kevin. were the next groups to come out like to New York. Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart. Who is that kid? <laughs> Kevin, can I borrow a commercial? <laughs> what? So, what? What year was that that you that you you really started? And I guess it would have been. Oh, I started in two thousand. I mean, I took a class with. Uh, um, I took a class in the suburbs, um, but then I when I started, I started going to open mics every Wednesday at the Laugh House, and then if you did good, they put you on a Thursday which is a different crowd and then you can work your way up to hosting it's like any club i guess you host at the weekends and then once you started featuring uh, the advice i got was you got to go you got to move you got to move to new york you know you mm -hmm. can't you know otherwise it's like because at the time you, you know you're three four years in or something then there's more time to grow but if you stay in philly for you could get you know you could be 10 years in and then when you go to new york no one cares that you're at 10 years in Story yeah. of my career. <laughs> what career? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Do you, th do you think, well. that, Mike? Do you think that changed yeah. in a way? Like we were just talking. Oh, it's all changed. Dom, now. Before Dom came on, you were saying you got to like build your own brand, following wherever. Yeah, Steve was saying, uh, you know, I'm going to break into the New York clubs, and that's all important and stuff. It's important, you know, it's not that it's not important. It's just that right. this podcast is probably the best thing you're doing. You know, it's like more getting a fan base. It's almost reverse engineering it. I think coming up, you used to have to work and then get better and then get a fan base. Now it's like get a fan base first and then figure it out along the way. Wow. Yeah. I mean, getting yeah, a fan base is a huge thing because you could just do whatever you want i mean we we care i i care about my act i care about the skill set but you know i mean you can get a fan base and then still work on it mm -hmm. All right, all right. <laughs> did uh did you self-produce a lot of a lot of your stuff like and do you, do you still self-produce a lot of stuff like uh you know like phone videos and, and things like that i mean this is all new when, when i was i came up it was uh 
it was still live at premium blend had ended it was live at gotham they were stepping mm -hmm. so comedy central gave you stepping stones to uh the half hour i would did i did a live at gotham which is eight minutes they give you a half hour which is 22 minutes then your next yeah. your next benchmark was an hour they'd give you these benchmarks to climb but then that kind of went all out the window and um you know now it's really all turned around so you, it's you, like you did a lot of late night spots right how many late night spots yeah. are you doing I did six. I've done six tonight shows. One with Leno, wow. and uh, um, three with Carson. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did one, one with Leno. Could have been nicer. And then I've done the other five with Fallon. Oh, I did awesome. one Conan also. Dom, did, did you, you ever last Dom. comic standing a couple times? Also, like any NBC time, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll compete. I don't care, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. However, it shakes out, but. It, the, do you want to do last comic standing? Some some guys were like, "No, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to humiliate myself." I'm like, "No, no, I'll compete, man. Let's let's whatever. I want NBC based time on NBC." Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Dom, did you ever work with Jimmy Fallon, Dom? Yeah, I did his show, but he used to. It was like an opening act for friends of mine. He had a, a, a guitar and everything. It wasn't a great kid. And look at him now, huh? God bless him. Do you think he laughs like over laugh? I think I think I like Jimmy, but I think there's one point and they left that he's just pushing. He yeah. starts that yeah, banging himself. But Dom, um, I actually think I'm that funny. So we <laughs> are. I, I'm, no, he's not over laughing. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. You, know, you know what I like about you? You're so relaxed on those you know, big dead dead spots. You know, whatever. I know you're waiting for a laugh, but no, I'm not <laughs> you're, you're my guest. Great work. <laughs> But Dom, I, I lived in Philly. I lived in Philly uh, for eight years. I'm not from there, but I lived there and I started comedy there. But I also was a teacher, so I taught in uh, I taught in oh, the cool. city. I taught in Northeast Philly, and um, so where the white people live. Where yeah, home of the whites and um, <laughs> the Northeast, uh, the working class whites, the Irish and the Polish, because <laughs> God knows you guys wouldn't have them in South Philly. No, and, definitely uh, not in South Philly. No, not in South Philly, you wouldn't have them. And um, so, I and I also got my master's from Cabrini College, which I understand is oh. not there anymore. So that's comforting. What you get a master's? What, what, what was your special education? Um, you were you were talking about Cabrini. I didn't I didn't know that that school wasn't wasn't there anymore. Did they no, change, I think it got change taken names? over by somebody. Else. It got bought by somebody, or it mm. got merged. So I don't even know mm. if my degree is valid anymore. So this better. It's better work out. That's why I'm on the road. What, uh, when when did you when did you stop teaching? Did you go right from teaching to doing comedy full time or uh, when, no? When, did that happen? I, I, when I moved to New York, I had my degree. I had a I have a dual certification, so I started working with little kids, three to five year olds, uh, with tantrum and stuff. So I worked with them part time till like mm -hmm. uh, five years, five six years until I could like get on the road a little bit more and pay. And, you know, I kept my overhead low for like, right. I'm talking years and years and years, roommates for years and years, you know? Mm -hmm. So who, 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 any uh, mentors in Philly, like any, any comics that really took you under their wing to come to mind? Um, in Philly, like Philly, New York, <laughs> in Philly. <laughs> Philly yeah. Um, in, uh, in New York, I don't know. There was a good group of guys in New York. Big J uh, was one of the guys who brought me around to the clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dave Attell, like uh, late nights at the Comedy Cellar. He was he's unreal. He was very he's, kind. He's, he's as good but, as they get. I mean, he's really, really solid. And he did a couple shows, brought me into them. Dave's old porn um, uh, Comedy Cellar. Uh, Comedy Central had a show. Um, mm -hmm. Dave's underground. It, he brought me into those shows to like write and perform on them. So, um, yeah, I would say that. Don't you think, he, don't you think he's the, he's as good as it gets? And then it's just a matter of taste. I mean, for me, for my money, for for me, that's he's my he's the guy. You know, oh, yeah, me too. Big fan. I like yeah. what's the the, uh, the globe with travel. Remember, remember the joke about he's afraid to travel because parents used to beat him with, with a globe. <laughs> the globe. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Let's, let's let's do some other really good get some people. <laughs> did, uh, 
Did you did you guys catch uh, the SNL this this past weekend with uh, yeah. with, with Shane Gillis? Yeah. What uh, what would you guys think was, about it? It was great. I, I, he was so he was relaxed, wasn't he? <laughs> no, he was. I'm serious. I, I thought he was terrific. I'm friends with uh, I'm friends with Shane. I, I I like him a lot. I think he he crushed. I thought he crushed, and I thought the sketches were like the best sketches. I think. I mean, I haven't. You know, I, 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 asked, I, asked, I asked to see her. Is he an actor too? Because he, he, yeah. he got a gig after that, but she was really, really fun. Yeah, he well, he, yeah he's a talented, he, talented guy, and he's very funny. So it's good to see. It's good to see the good guys win. It's that's good exactly what it's about. Funny win, yeah. Well, he did. He did a lot of skits early, early on in his career, right, uh, Ronaldo? I feel like I remember you showing me those, like for for years, right? Like the Gillian yeah. Hughes skits that they used to yeah. do. So he's done yeah, a lot of acting, he, I guess, with that, right? Him and a bunch of the guys uh, I started with in Philly, they would, they were always putting out these great sketches. Him, yeah. McCusker, O'Connor, Tommy Pope, Tommy Pope. Tommy Pope's a friend of mine, and uh, yeah. I, I thought his show was going to go. The Delco Proper. Show oh, they did Delco. such a great job with I that. I thought it was yeah. going to really go. I thought it was a can't miss. So, but I mean, that has nothing to do with them. It had to do with comedy. Right. So, yeah. Uh, what 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 happened with Comedy Central? Is that even like? It got bought. Like, I got bought. Everybody got fired, and now they do. They're doing syndications. You know, uh, I, I'm sure you guys could appreciate giving a show like The Office a chance. Yeah. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> but I don't know what they're. I mean, besides The Daily Show, and uh, I, I, I brought, I brought Voss, I brought Voss up at the punchline. I, I used that as a credit, and then he get off. He gets off stage, and he goes. Don't, what the fuck were you thinking? Comedy Central? Comedy? That, that's not a fucking credit anymore. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, Rich. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Voss is what Voss is classic, man. You gotta love. I see him once in a while in the in the city. These guys are all. I, I don't see anybody anymore. Most of these guys are on the road making money. If they have a following, and most of them do because they have hit podcasts or 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 whatever, they 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 are able to draw, and so. Uh, maybe I'll bump into him during the week, but most of the time it's like they're on the road, just making, making money, which is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's your, what's your home club right now? What's your home base? I like the cellar a lot. The comedy cellar I've been there for years and uh, they're good to me. The stand is a, mm -hmm. is a great club. Um, I also work Gotham. Um, I work all the downtown clubs, the New York comedy clubs. Both New York comedy clubs, the downtown. I live downtown, so I just can walk, and, and it's it's easier for me coming off the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the stand kind of went from not being one of the top tier ones, but like the last what, like six, seven years, like really broke through. No, no, I think it is. I think that it's it's packed on the weekends when I'm there. When I'm in town, I'm not there that much anymore. But like uh, when I, it's always good. You can get a good variety. I think the key is like getting a good. Cause it's not really about the money it's about like getting a good uh getting a good uh feedback on the jokes mm -hmm. you know what i mean so and then and, and trying to develop them to take them on the road right so yeah but the crowds you, are you, good. You, the crowds are really good though. You know, people ask me about what was easy oh, sorry no, me, is, i mean no, no problem so it must be easy for you to tell to know better i said it's hardest for me you know, it's like because you trying to think of everything they ever loved and talked about this. So, you know what I mean? You, you, you said, you know, when, when they were only like 50, 50 or 60 comics in the room, the country is a lot easier to change. Anyway, what do you think? Yeah, it's like you, you mean to like change your like style or material? That, like yeah. depending on where you were at? It's, I think it's much harder today. The easy part is these, we have, they have the, the, the computer stuff and all that. Right. That's, that's, a, that's a different world. Right. You know? It's a different world. It's a different yeah, world. I, I, I always yeah. think for, I always think for like New York and LA comics that do the road like you guys, it's always crazy to me to observe because you guys are doing these tight 10 to 15 minute sets. And then on mm -hmm. the weekends, you're stretching an hour. Right. It's like, you know, I think, Dom, you were saying not too long ago, I think when we had Brian Regan on the show, you were mm -hmm. saying actually what ends up happening is from doing the road and stretching like that, when you do those tight showcase sets, it's easier to get the beats. 
I never see anybody stretch more than Dave Chappelle. I love Dave, all that stuff, but you can take five minutes out of him just getting a drag of a cigarette. You know, I was gonna, I was going to my sister. No, no, it was about, smoke the fucking thing. We, we got to move <laughs> on. Okay, please. Building, yeah. building the tension, the show, the showman, showmanship. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's all. It's just very. I, it, even the time that I've been in it, it's it's changed. And I would say, like, before the pandemic to now, it's like had, it's just social media and everything is as has taken over. You know, because I mean, it's hard because it's like you'll you'll get something and you'll think it's great and funny and it'll be working live, but then you put it online and it doesn't do that well. Then you do mm-hmm. something that's garbage that you think is garbage, but you put it online and it, mur- you know, it murders. So it's like, what is it? The algorithm? Like, I don't know what's happening here, you know? It's and there's also just... Mm-hmm. I didn't mean to step on anybody, sorry. No, you're good, Dom. Go ahead. I don't remember what I was doing anyway. <laughs> I was, How did I, I get here? That, yeah, I was just saying that the amount of content that's out there, too, that you have to, you know, try to compete with. It's right. just like there's so there's just so much of it, you know, every day. There's just there's just so much of it. Yeah. You know? Well, that's the other thing. It's like getting on the ground floor of a new technology. That's h- part of it. It has nothing to do with like we're right. so precious about our content. And Dom, when you were coming up, it was probably about just protecting that hour and everything. But really now what it's it, if you can get in on the ground floor of like podcasting, for example, if you can get on the ground floor of it. It's like yeah. you're you know, you have a better chance of being not guaranteed, but you have a better chance of being massively successful. If you get mm-hmm. on the ground floor of TikTok, you know what I mean? It's like better yeah. chance of having a draw. Be- the ground floor of Instagram reels, you know, your mm-hmm. your stuff is getting shared all over the place. So I think that's part of it. It's aligning yourself with the the emerging technology. So the next thing that comes out, whatever it is, four square or whatever it is, like we all gotta get on it. Like uh, what was the other one during the pandemic that where you talked uh clubhouse the clubhouse oh, that's right yeah i forgot that about that that yeah that, that, that came it's came and gone over it's clubhouse now it's like that all didn't right. it, it petered out but it's like we all had to get we all had to do it you know Be, just in case mm-hmm. yeah. what was it I don't, I don't know that it was like a uh it was an app basically where you could just listen in to live it was almost like live radio shows, but then you could also talk back and forth with the, the hosts, right? Isn't that kind of like how it was, it was like a live, live chat room? It was like a right. live chat where everybody's talking back and forth. They like hit the button to signal in that they wanted to talk. It was like a live AA meeting. <laughs> I, I assume everybody here is a drug addict. Assume <laughs> away. We, Mike, uh, we were talking about how JFL used to be the significant thing that you'd work hard for. Right. You would showcase there and it would lead to all this opportunity. And now that even kind of died down a little bit. I don't know what I haven't been up there in a while. So I don't know. I know Dom, you go every year, right? Do you do you, you did go Montreal? Every- Montreal yeah. you saying? Yeah, yeah, Montreal. Yeah. yeah. I've been there more than any other white guy. Uh, <laughs> No, I've been there uh, the most of anybody from the States. Wow. Because they let me host them. I, c- I couldn't do that with just material, believe me. Right. I have a sick a, a, a smoke, but I don't ever sing. <laughs> right. Motherfucker. What's you, that? You would do, that? You would do, you would, they would have you up to host that too, Dom? You would like ho- host shows for people a lot? Yeah, I did a lot of that, like uh, new faces. That got a lot of people that launched a lot of uh, careers. Yeah. Yeah. There was some. There's some people who were so good, and some people who were so bad. And to see the seven minutes of seven, what seven minutes could be and would be if you were good. Right. A lot of good ones, but there were a couple. Oh my God! I can't oh. believe. Where the fuck did you get here? Who did you? Who did you have? <laughs> well, I thought it's different because uh, in Montreal, I just felt like they. I thought it was all about your jokes. I thought, oh, it's all about your jokes. You know that they. they, they you know, and I, I didn't make it for a couple years, you know, the third year I finally made it. But I was like, oh, my mm-hmm. jokes aren't strong enough. I got to go back to the drawing board and work on my jokes. Then I got up there and I, I checked everybody else out. It's like, oh, it's not about jokes. It's about your persona because they're trying to sell TV shows and they want yeah. somebody that they can base a TV show around. And they have writers mm-hmm. and stuff. They don't need you to be they, they want to see the charisma on stage of you being at least it was like that being a character or being whatever 
you know, talking about your truth, your family, whatever it is that they could build something that they could dial into to build a show around. See, I was all caught up in the joke. Like, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, this is about the joke. It's like, no, 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 it's not about the jokes. It's about your experience and being charismatic in, in, in describing your experience, kind of. At least that's the impression I got. Did you, did you do yeah. new faces? I did new faces, and then I did a couple of uh, – then and, and other years I did other shows up there, you know, showcase shows. I love that. I love, I love bringing people up and fucking around. You know, Judy Gold. Uh -huh. she's, she's in the dirty show, right? I had to go downstairs from the stage under the. Remember that, Mike? Uh, no, stage, yeah. I never did the dirty show. No, uh huh. Oh, so she, she, I get on, I come down there. She goes, "How you doing?" I said, "Great. How you doing?" She goes, "You just smell my pussy from here." <laughs> I said, "I can no, but I could hear it." <laughs> and she it took her. <laughs> she's so fucking funny. Yeah, I like Judy. Judy's very funny. She's very funny. It's crazy. Yeah. She said, with the other, uh, it's French is the number one language there. Yeah. And she's going like this to a waitress. I said, you fucking idiot. They they understand English. They know it. And they speak French. And you're just going like they're babies. I don't want to eat this coffee. You took this coffee because they fucking poisoned it. Yeah, it's spitting it or something. <laughs> Uh, get that one. Another that's another good shop for Philly players. They you get, you get to Montreal. It's it's the best you know the best checks of any checks of my fucking 1957. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hottest tomatoes. Broads. I think you know. I think every I think everything has a podcast now, right? It's like food, sports, yeah. teachers. Yeah. There, there there's literally. You could be into anything. There's a podcast for it. It's just right. such a saturated, like yeah. Dom, Dom was a part of the boom. Like we talked about that right. on previous episodes. He was, right. he was literally in Joe Rogan's garage and Mark Marin's. Didn't you say Mark Marin, Dom invited you to like a small room? It was like episode nine. <laughs> um, I don't know, but um, he said a really nice thing, you know, he goes, I said, Mark, thanks for coming down. And he says, uh, I, I'd do anything for you because you helped me get out of the coke, the habits, you know. It's nice to feel the ascension of somebody's life for the for the better. So, oh, he was bad on drugs? Fucking near death, yeah. yeah. He was driving Missy, Missy's, uh, you know, car, so, yep. driving in a, in a limo full, you know, full of fucking drugs. It was crazy. <laughs> and, I mean, I don't know, but some of these guys that, like, um, Who's a kid? I love fucking. I was practicing tennis. I realized no matter how much I'd work, I'll never be better than the wall. <laughs> is that? Are you talking about Hedberg? Is that? Yeah, Hedberg. Yeah. Head, yeah, head, yeah. Head, that's one of Hedberg's jokes. I, yeah. I love that fucking kid. And I was trying so hard. Not that I'm. Not that I'm a doctor. But he just. <laughs> he was like. He was gone. You know. He's just up for heroin. He's doing. Yeah, hope you enjoy our, our podcast here. Lots of laughs. <laughs> but, did you know him, Mark? I didn't know him. No, he was uh, he passed away like right as I was moving to New York. I moved to New York at the end of uh, 2003. So, was it easy for you to break in, or did you have to do the hang the first couple years? I did the hang. I thought that was the the, the advice I got was hang you got to hang out you got to make sure you're around because somebody doesn't show up there was no there was uh cell phones but it wasn't like now so it's right. like somebody needs to show somebody doesn't make it you could go up and then you could get past and then you could work the clubs and and it was a big deal and uh i gotta say big j okerson really he took me like he was just like didn't promise me anything but he was like hey come come and hang out you know come and hang out come to the comic strip come to the comedy cellar just be around, be around guys, get to know guys, hang out, you know, and that's what you would do. And I came in the last days of the, I don't know if you uh, spent any time there, Don, but the Boston Comedy Club in the village, I spent the last, it was the last days of the Boston Comedy Club under Barry Katz. And then it became the Comedy Village under Al Martin, who just passed away, God rest his soul. And, uh, and so it, it's, my point is it was important when I was there to like, Really get to a club and hang your hat somewhere so you could just get to know everybody. Right. 
through. You don't know the scene. All I knew was Philly. And when I came out there, there's like a whole different scene in New York. And you got to get to know the guys and know what's going on. That used to be what it is. I think it's all, like I said, all different. It's still to some extent to do that. But I think you're better allocating your time towards podcasting and then in videos and really trying to like, because, you know, part of this, the good part of this is it's it, it knocked all the um, gatekeepers out of the box. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want it bad enough, you could just go right at the fans now. So that's that's kind of good. But the bad part of it is people who are um, n- not pure artists, but just marketing people, they're right. figuring out how to win without, you know, the skill set. So yeah, that's, that's that, yeah, you're not, yeah, you're kidding. Anybody, that. anybody who can get make money can make it, it's great. You know, I, I wish mm-hmm. you the best. It's like, uh, you know, now marketing people are winning versus, you know, talent. We really have to use the spots. You know, we have to utilize them to like grow because it's it's important to us. You know, it's important to us to have a good to have a good act, you know, and to build. Yeah, during mm. during Dom, during Dom's era, you had to like Covered audition, audition all the time. Yeah. Right. I mean, those guys were groundbreaking. I mean, these guys were the purists, man. They they, they had to, they were the purists. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I was just just looking for attention, boys. You know, did you do Did you do Rogan's Club yet, Mike? I did it once, and I just got another date there, so I'm gonna do yeah, it. Again. I'm gonna do it again at the end of May, and uh, and it's just fantastic. I mean, it's just. It's really good. Yeah, Dom's out there. Next, Dom's out there next, next week. week. Oh my God! I mean, for the first for the first time, Dom doing it. Yeah, that's what I was in that. Yeah, it, you're gonna blow. It was I mean, an open you. Uh, you're gonna destroy it, man. It's really, it's really something. It's really, really, really great. Yeah, I'm. It's I'm like doing... it's a comic who built a comedy club. So it's like, that's, that was his, his dream. That was a you know, what he yeah. was dreaming, made millions of dollars, but but it's you know, he was dreaming. Just wanted to be a better, just like his, his, uh, his, 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 he's so focused, so fucking focused on everything. You know, and it's amazing. Yeah. And the people ask me about the politics. I don't want to talk about my friends and the politics because if I'm going to lose a friend because I hate Brit- the Trump. And fuck them. Right, right. Oh, I thought you meant the politics of, uh, of like show business. No, I'm not really in show business. What I do is more special. I'm gonna go for the big laugh. I go for the little laugh, tremoring. Sometimes I put in a fake, fake <laughs> bomb it and come in and drink it again. Just, <laughs> you, know, you, you can't follow that. I'm telling you. Uh, did, did Austin have a comedy scene before Rogan moved there? Yeah, they had a they had a great uh, couple of things. They had. Did you ever go to that, Mike? So I didn't go. I, I didn't really go that before, before Rogan. Before, but mm-hmm. I, I, I've done other clubs there. It's, uh, it's a good I, town. I've been at the Moon Tower. I've been to Moon Tower a few times. Tommy, yeah, that's the one I went to. Yeah, Colleen McGar. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I liked I liked the Moon Tower a lot, and it's a good scene. I think that the, the homeless situation down there is pretty. They're on some kind yeah. of like a. They're on some kind of pot that makes you um, doesn't calm you down. It does the opposite. <laughs> Yeah, it's called Crystal Mike, meth. Mike, Dom, Dom performs for the homeless every year at Thanksgiving. He was talking about on an episode. Weren't you telling us, Dom, at, on yeah, the Laugh yeah, Factory? See, I go in there in the morning, and it was half empty. And it was it was full before I got on. I said, well, what happened? And the, and the guy said, you know, they didn't like the comedian. I go, guys, you're homeless. You left a, well, with free food. Think about it before you get out of here. You sure you want to go? They, were, they started laughing so of it. You got to how bad whoever that comedian is, God rest his soul. Yeah. He, people were leaving. I don't give, I'll go back to my fucking trash bin. I got to get over the way from this <laughs> He's stuck. Doesn't he write new stuff? Do <laughs> uh, you walk the guy who lives under a bridge? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's really. How, how, I had something well, similar where I was doing a um, elderly. It was an elderly community, and I was just bombing terribly. It was outside. I, mm. I, I blame that. But I was bombing so terribly, and it's like they're in wheelchairs and stuff, so I couldn't walk them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 
I was on the stage about two weeks ago, <laughs> and uh, I was really having a tough time. I actually asked the, the uh, I said to the guys, to the audience, I go, is this what bombing is? <laughs> you consider it as a bombing? <laughs> 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 yeah, I had to follow George Wallace the other night, Saturday uh, yeah. night. Yeah. And he, he's not only a great comedian, he's a preacher. And he has him going, and he, and he actually he goes like this at the end, so you give him a standing elevation. And I go, all right, what, what, am I, what am I supposed to do now? What did he find? He was, he was great. Best set I was almost supposed to do, fly around the room. With, like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. me, I'm, I'm, how many minutes do I have? 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, I've got 12 minutes now. Uh, it's great. We live. That's really great. Now, no, Austin, sure. Austin's got a really good scene now. It's just like, uh, I don't know if all of those clubs, it's got a population of like a million. So I hope all those clubs can stay open, like in New yeah, York. Yeah, I, I got a show. I got a show Wednesday at uh, Cap City. Oh, yeah. So, it's good. Yeah, I, I put a show together with all the Philly guys. I don't know if you know them, Mike. Like, um, it's uh, Lemare Lee, Sean Gardini. I got Matt McCusker on the show. So I'm I'm catching up with a bunch of the Philly guys that I started with. You know what's fun that night? I'm sorry. Go what's ahead. that, Dom? That was fun that night we did. Uh, oh, oh yeah, we did. Oh, we did so a, Joel's. Yeah, we did yeah. a showcase. Dom Herrera and friends at Joel's Club. Oh yeah. It, it was me, Dom, Chris Kosher. Uh, I like Chris a lot. J Jimmy I know Chris Schu from like a long time ago. Yeah. J Jimmy mm -hmm. Schubert and Eleanor. Schubert's Harris. fucking strong now. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, that's a great show, man. That's really good. Uh, I love her. You know Eleanor? I know Eleanor, yeah. She's terrific, isn't she? She's great. She's great. She's a great person, too. She's very funny and a great person. I fingered her one tonight. I'll never <laughs> forget it. Right before she got on. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I think I dropped too, dropped too much. I don't know. Should we end it on the finger joke? What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Brian, it's up to you. You're directing. Hey, I'm in. I'm in there. Let me say before we do that, thanks for coming in because it was fun making you. Not making you. What the fuck? It's fun to see me and you, and we hope you come back. We're looking for another. And, uh, might help. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> I'm cut. Well, I, I can't appreciate. I, I appreciate you guys having me on. I, I really, uh, I'm grateful to be on. And uh, like I said, Dom, you're a living legend. So we all looked up to you. Uh, coming up in comedy, so uh, I just want you Thank to know you. that. Yeah. Can you can you hold me? <laughs> Come on. Tight, nice and tight, like I like it. <laughs> Yo, Dom, over here. Hey, Dom, hey. Yo, Dom.